I am the London Bureau Chief at Vice News and uh, uh, run all of our international news gathering, um, primarily across Europe, Middle East and North Africa. And uh, my team will focus mainly on broadcast uh, media, so for uh, television and for digital, working on our nightly newscast, Vice News Tonight, and uh, what you're about to see, a sizzle from Vice on Showtime, so a 16-episode, three-season uh, documentary series. Um, when we started off at Vice News uh, several years ago, uh, as the world's uh, preeminent youth-facing media, our feedback from our audiences was that they didn't want a traditional nightly bulletin of the day's news, a synopsis of what had happened, because uh, while those programs have always rated really highly and are very valued and had their place, of course, um, the idea that you need the top 20 stories of the day as if you hadn't been paying attention or read the news or seen the news during the course of the day is slightly alien to people who are scrolling on various social media platforms throughout their day, each day. So what they wanted and what we have tried to do advice in our content is uh, in-depth immersive uh, storytelling. So um, our nightly show, when we started it uh, six seasons ago, seven seasons ago even, um, the story count was four or five films per half hour, which uh, if you are familiar with uh, US network news is something very different. The pace was very different. Uh, the narrative uh, was very different. And also the breadth of stories that we were covering was very different because again, what the audience, what uh, Gen Z was telling us was that they wanted to know about the entire world around them, not just solely focused on uh, a narrow set of stories. Let's take a look at this. Um, it's three minutes, but I think worth um, watching, uh, not just because it sort of shows you the contrast between what we had been doing, um, and it also speaks, I think, to the shift um, that you'll have seen uh, in other newsrooms and outlets as well, as everyone kind of pivoted towards uh, TikTok in the wake of the war in Ukraine. Um, but I think it also speaks to the power that uh, you in the audience have in terms of uh, uh, and in, in terms of the manifesto making you're going to uh, do over the next couple of days, think about the power that collectively you now have in terms of driving uh, how news is not only shaped, but how it looks um, and the viewing experience as well. Uh, let's see if this works. This is Central Kharkiv, and this is what Russian bombs have done. We're very close to where the Russian separatists are. Get down. The government has no idea that you made this gun. They want you to register it. Nobody's doing that. Do you believe Brittany Griner is a political prisoner? This situation requires nuance. The only answer is through public outcry. You're dealing with a dictator. Our lives, our rights, you there are thousands of people protesting across the country. And what about the right to health care? There is no right to health care in the Constitution. We're wondering where these women are going. The Russian forces are trying to encircle this area. We haven't been able to get out. Do you worry about being killed here? That's just oil, right? This is that's just oil. oil. Why is it that this has been allowed to sit here like this for so long? I was shocked. It calls into question everything this country was built on. The US Republican Party has been all talk and no action. So you're coming here to learn a new conservatism? Spending the day at the biggest Russian base in Central African Republic. Who exactly were you surrendering to? Vaknev. You don't think it's time to bring back the asylums? No. It's like being on a roller coaster. This is a new frontier of war. What are the rules? The rules are wrong in the first place. Is it okay to break them? What about within your government? Do you accept bribes? No, I don't. You can just sit there and fabricate that. You pay your rent, you pay your electricity bill with money that you make playing a video game. Do you really think it's fun for everyone? Hurra! What's the role of the news media in Russia today? People need information. People get information. Shouldn't it be to question the government as well? <laughs> Seriously, it's so funny. 
trust in public institutions, in the government, is almost at an all-time low. We're seeing bodily autonomy be attacked. That includes trans and non-binary folk. So it's time for us to get together and fight. What are we fighting for? Freedom! Let's go! It's OK. What is it exactly that you all want? Freedom. So um, that's just a, a snippet of what we've been doing over the last uh, couple of years, and we'll see some uh, clips later from our coverage out of UK, uh, Ukraine rather, um, on TikTok. So you get a sense of the contrast between cinematic, immersive storytelling versus the lo-fi content that um, has a really um, uh, active audience on uh, TikTok. I'm going to pull up this one. OK. so. Um, February 24 this year, I feel, is one of those moments in history where everyone probably knows and remembers what they were doing when uh, they woke up to the news that uh, Vladimir Putin had decided to uh, invade uh, Ukraine. For me, it was, uh, it's rare that I wake up in the middle of the night. It's even rarer on the occasions that I do wake up in the middle of the night that I would choose to look at my phone, because inevitably that means I'll just be uh, awake and alert. For whatever reason, at 5.03 on the 24th of February, I woke up in my hotel room in Kyiv and chose to look at my phone. And then I think 19 hours later, went to bed after we had spent the entire day filming. You'll see um, the results of uh, the first day of shooting um, on uh, uh, TikTok, we'll, we'll show you later. Um, already in Ukraine, since the beginning of uh, the annexation of Crimea and um, the uh, emergence of those self-declared uh, republics in the east, 14,000 people had been killed uh, and many more injured and displaced. Since February of this year, the UN estimates that 6,000 people have been killed, more than 10,000 people have been injured, and of course, millions we know have been internally displaced or forced to flee abroad. Um, that represents a terrible moment in history and in all our lives, but um, for the purposes of this conversation today, it also marks a seismic shift in newsrooms around uh, the world, because uh, what was very clear from the outset is everyone was interested in what was happening in this terrible story, but a long underserved audience, Gen Z, finally had their voice heard and we saw everyone pivot to TikTok because the audience there was just incredible and credible from uh, the get-go. One of the things um, in my 17 years as a journalist that I've heard uh, time and again from uh, newsroom veterans is that young people don't care about news. And that always seemed slightly strange to me uh, that we were just choosing to ignore the next wave of people um, coming into uh, the uh, audience for us and uh, that we were solely relying on the people who were already there rather than uh, chasing uh, the people who um, were next in line. And I think this uh, story in particular has uh, forced a lot of uh, newsroom leaders to um, analyze what we've been doing and why we're doing it and who we're telling our stories uh, to. Um, it makes sense as well uh, that uh, rather than the traditional bulletin um, end of day uh, storytelling that we've seen for decades, um, that why would 18 to 29 year olds uh, change their viewing habits entirely? If you're going to stream comedy and drama and you're going to scroll on social media platforms, you're very unlikely to then change all of that or ignore all of that uh, viewing habits and uh, uh, tune in at 6 p.m. for a 22-minute bulletin or at 10 p.m. for a 22-minute uh, bulletin. So um, I think the sort of it finally dawned on people in the wake of uh, the war that um, there are other platforms out there, there are other narratives, um, uh, narrative structures and storytelling methods out there that we should be paying uh, attention to. Um, very quickly, in uh, February, we knew that people wanted uh, a great detail on this story. Um, as an example, in the first uh, two weeks of the war, we put out uh, two specials of the show, so single topic, um, standalone episodes of uh, uh, Vice News Tonight. Uh, you can see the viewing figures there um, in the uh, six million um, a piece for, for those. That interest in the story has uh, stayed constant throughout the year. Um, collectively, 
our films from Ukraine, and that's specifically the films that have been made inside Ukraine, have garnered over 38 million views. I should say also that uh, footage and films from our team in uh, Russia um, have been similarly popular. For example, uh, a film we did recently on Putin's partial mobilization uh, had 4 million views within 24 hours on YouTube. Um, so that appetite um, is still very much there and uh, exists uh, to this day and, and likely will um, continue on. Um, things that are different between 2014, um, the first iteration of the war in Ukraine, and 2022. Um, for 2014, uh, I was at Al Jazeera English at the time, uh, we would focus primarily on getting our content out on the channel, of course, uh, but uh, Facebook and uh, some Twitter uh, feeds as well, and then uh, sporadically on YouTube. Well, that's dramatically changed in um, the eight years since, and uh, the focus very much on if you are going into the field to tell the story for TV, you are expected to file text, TikTok, uh, Instagram Reels, and everything will go on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook as well, so that we're servicing the widest audience uh, possible. Uh, just as a sense of how successful and how quickly um, TikTok was successful um, in uh, February or post February 24th for us. Um, we went from 300,000 followers on our uh, Vice World News uh, TikTok account. Uh, I think that was the figure on the morning of February 24th to uh, over a million within the first week. And we now sit at somewhere like 2.5 uh, million um, followers. And you can see there that between uh, Instagram, so stories and reels and TikToks, um, our vertical video has um, amassed more than 260 million views uh, since the beginning of this new uh, invasion. Um, I'm going to play Matt's TikTok. So Matt was the correspondent who was with me. He was the first phone call I had to make when I woke up on February 24th to get him in the shower and out the door. Um, listen to that, and then we'll talk about it's about seven o'clock in the morning. We're here in the streets of Kiev. You can probably hear uh, behind me all over the city, there are bomb sirens going off. This morning, a couple hours ago, Russia began its war on Ukraine. It's something that US intelligence agencies were warning about for weeks now. Um, people, there was a lot of people who here in Kiev, especially who didn't think it could actually happen. Um, but this morning, shortly after five, five o'clock in the morning, Russia started bombing multiple points around the country, including here in the capital, Kiev. It's, it's actually unbelievable that we're here in a city, close to three million people, we're in the middle of the city and there are air raid sirens going off, signaling that there could potentially be bombing here from Russian forces who have now started their war on Ukraine this morning. So you see also the difference there between, well, what we traditionally had done um, for TV and what we're doing there, but I think marked contrast between what you would typically see on other news channels as well. There's no suit and tie, it's very conversational, he's stumbling a little, it's not uh, word perfect, um, and he's just using his phone, that sort of lo-fi effort. Um, got something like 25 million views um, within 36 hours of um, publishing to uh, TikTok. In 2022, TikTok became the most downloaded app in the world, um, surpassing Twitter and uh, Instagram. And by the end of the year, it will overtake YouTube as the social media platform users spend the most time watching. Uh, it has more than a billion active users. That'll be up to a billion eight uh, by the end of this year. Um, and here's the really important thing. Around a quarter of US adults under 30 get their news from TikTok, and that, that sort of number is, is mirrored in countries um, around the world. Nearly half of people between 18 and 30 in the US, again, just because I'm using Pew Research Center data, it's specifically on um, the US, uh, nearly half of people between 18 and 30 um, use the platform for news. 67% of users use it daily, and 16% use TikTok or are scrolling on TikTok almost constantly. Uh, so that led to a change in every newsroom, including ours. Um, we've always um, poured focus on 
uh, on the ground, in the field, journalism, what you're seeing with your eyes, what we gather ourselves is what we put on screen. Um, and certainly that's what we've tried to do with uh, TikTok uh, content as well. Um, but there are, of course, other ways to tell stories and sending everyone into the field for every single story has a cost implication. So um, we've looked to uh, diversify what we do um, on TikTok. And it's about understanding that we can create new narratives in a place that journalists are finally uh, viewing as trustworthy. It's, it's um, all down to pace. It's very different from what we do in our filmmaking. It's, what, it's very different from what you would see in the traditional news package um, on the BBC or CBS or NBC or whatever. Um, every single second is valuable count content because what you need is something that is thumb-stopping uh, versus page-turning uh, because very quickly you lose interest of someone if um, the material is lacking or you haven't quite got the narrative structure right in what you're doing um, on TikTok. So that's definitely been a learning experience for us. But we have had success just in terms of other formats, so where you can see um, Alan, who will have play now, and a few others um, are either remote at home or in the office when they're doing it, but um, will uh, engage in a different type of storytelling, but still using TikTok. Why does China keep changing the ending of movies? Why are all of these trees dead? Why is Japan asking young people to drink more alcohol? Why did a Belgian's king apologize for the death of 10 million people? How did the son of a former dictator just become president of the Philippines? How has this country completely run out of fuel? What's the connection between Russia and the far right? What do abortion laws look like around the world? What went wrong? What's going on? What happens now? Should you be worried? Why is it such a big deal? So, uh, we've definitely been here before, it's not just 2019, I feel, but uh, misinformation, disinformation, and fake news, um, terms that have been bandied around a lot in the last uh, couple of years, but I think in truth, particularly when it comes to reporting war, uh, propaganda has been around for decades and decades. And so, um, just the ways in which uh, that distorted information can get out there are obviously far greater. Um, the onus and responsibility on journalists is ever greater. Um, but what I would say, and also to bring it back to the manifesto making process, um, is understand the um, demands that you can make of journalists who should be, of course, fact checking and uh, ambassadors of fact. Everything that we bring to the table that we publish, there is a great responsibility on us, of course, to make sure that that information is accurate, correct, and up to date. Um, a bigger responsibility, I would argue, on the platform providers, um, just in terms of their content moderators and uh, verification techniques. But you as the audience aren't passive in this process either. Um, I think it's incumbent upon you if you are using these platforms to demand of the platform providers and the content creators on it that uh, their information is true, factual, and right and it's understanding the power that you have as a collective group um, and the, the role that you've played in that shift in journalism this year continues and will continue. Um, and it's making sure that your voice is heard here in terms of combating misinformation, uh, disinformation and fake news. Um, one last thing I wanted to talk about is, it's not just TikTok of course, um, but uh, just in terms of emerging platforms, um, we have, since we've seen the success on, on TikTok and understood that there is a great deal of interest in the world from uh, younger audiences, that there are other platforms um, and other people out there that we should be trying to reach. Uh, we launched a twice weekly show on Twitch, which is traditionally a gaming platform. I'm not a gamer, I'm told it's very popular. Um, and so... It's two presenters uh, based in the US who will, over the course of two, three, sometimes four hours, uh, talk to a series of our correspondents, either from the field um, about a story they're working on right at that moment, or uh, a big investigation that they've done, or some unique access story that has published in uh, recent uh, times. And then, of course, there is a live chat component to it, so that is your um, replacing the uh, phone-in, I guess, that is the traditional concept in TV and radio um, before. And we have seen um, some real success very early on 
in that. Again, uh, something that I think other newsrooms might have balked at um, up until February of this year and aren't yet doing, but um, if they saw some of the numbers that we have uh, internally, they'd realize, again, it's a brilliant way to reach a dynamic, new, and very interested uh, audience. I'll play this for you, and then I'll just give you some of those figures. We're here because we want to see society in a new and different way. Jesus Christ. We ready? So our bosses have finally let us get on Twitch. Which means you're going to be seeing some of this. Did you ever expect that you would have to flee Kiev with your family? But also some of this. <laughs> We're very, very close to the front line. We're going to dive into the wildest pieces we have ever made. Oh. If you're watching the news, you might be thinking, what the hell is going on? So we're going to try to break it down and figure out what's really going on. Are you hacking Vice right now? Things will get weird, and we're probably going to say some things we should not say. But that's why we're on Twitch. I'm Samir. And I'm Dexter. And this is Vice World News. On Twitch. So um, as a concluding thought, what I'll say is understand the um, might that collectively as an audience you have uh, in terms of no longer waiting for newsrooms and news outlets to catch up with what you want to see and watch this year you have changed journalism forever and I think will continue to do so. So um, invest in that power, um, understand the responsibility that brings and let's see where we, what we're watching uh, in years to come.